Steam cleaners can be incredibly useful tools for both car detailing and just around the house. They're extremely useful for chemical free cleaning as well as helping to neutralize odors and even kill some bacteria. So in today's video, I have three very, very popular options. All of these are gonna be in the same class, just about the same uh, capacity of water, same heating, all that kind of stuff. Very, very similar units and they'll even be pretty close in price. So my goal today is to figure out which one of these is the best option for the price. So in order to find that out, we're going to be looking at a few different things. Number one, we're gonna look at the specs of each of these units and then the overall design because there are some things that I like about some of them more than others. We're also gonna be looking at the quality of the accessories, not exactly the accessories that it come with because they vary and I'll put a list up here for you guys once we get into that, but the quality of them to see how long they should last. And then we'll get into some actual testing. I put in 30 ounces of water into each of these units, just pulled the trigger to see how long it actually runs for. So how much steam production you actually get. I'll also look at how long it actually takes to heat that up so that you're steam ready. And finally, we'll look at the actual steam production. If it spits out water while we're working or if it's a relatively dry steam. We'll also see how fast it loses pressure and if you have to wait for it to build up. So here we go guys, let's go ahead and jump into it. So here are the three machines that we have to look at today. First one is the central machinery. This is from Harbor Freight and retails for $129.99. Next up, we have the Wagner. Now this is their scaled down version. It's the same unit, essentially. It's just scaled down on the accessories. Uh, for me, as a car detailer, that's all I need, but we'll cover uh, the additional accessories here in a little bit. Now this one you can find on Amazon currently for 144. And finally, we have a very, very highly rated, very commonly used McCulloch steam cleaner. This is the MC1275, and this thing retails uh, on their website, $149.99, but on Amazon, you can get it currently for $139.99. So let's go ahead and talk about the listed specs of each of these machines. First one, the one from Harbor Freight, the central machinery. This thing is listed as a 41 ounce water capacity for up to 45 minutes of runtime. It has an eight foot, eight inch hose, and it comes with 18 different accessories that I'll list up here for you guys so you can see and really decide which accessories you need. Again, as a car detailer, I don't need that many accessories. It's very, very scaled down of what I actually need but it may be important for you if you're using around your house, mop accessories and all that kind of stuff. So I'll list it up here. Now this is a 12 and a half amp machine for 1500 watts and they state that the steam temperature is up to 212 degrees. Now we move on to the Wagner. This is the 905 model. So it's all the same model here. It's just the accessories that change. The 905 is the automotive one, scaled down accessories. You get 12 accessories with this one. Then you go to the 915, and on the Amazon, that's only a dollar more. It's 145 instead of 144 for this unit. Uh, that one comes with 18 accessories. And then you have the 925, which is a separate kind of package of accessories, and that one retails for 159, but you get 20 accessories. Now this one does have the shortest hose listed uh, across the board of all these machines, and I did test it out. It is the shortest hose, but it's still eight feet long. Now this one is listed as a 40 ounce capacity and they list it for a runtime of up to 40 minutes. So slightly under this one, but still 40 minutes is really good. And they do state the same as this one, 212 degrees. Now finally we have the McCulloch MC1275. This one actually has the longest hose at nine feet. Also 18 different accessories similar to the central machinery one. But the difference here is that it is listed as a 48 ounce uh, tank capacity. So higher tank capacity than the others, but still only states a runtime of up to 45 minutes. So we're all very, very similar in, in specs here. 1500 watts, the Wagner was also 1500 watts. I didn't state that, but 1500 watts over here for the McCulloch and it just states that it gets over 200 degrees uh, for the steam. Uh, it doesn't say 212, it just says over 200. So now let's go ahead and look at the overall design of these units. There's definitely one that's my favorite, but they're all relatively similar. So first up, again, the central machinery. You have a basic fill tank on the back here. This one's a little bit different than the others. You actually have to push down to release, push, and, and then and tighten and loosen. Um, cool there, little on-off switch is in the back, and it is covered, so it's waterproof, or at least water resistant. You have your on and then your steam indicator here. Basically, when you turn the machine on, both these will turn on, and then once the steam is ready, this one turns off, similar with all the other ones. Small little two wheels in the back, not you know, not amazing quality, but totally fine for what the machine is and uh, equivalent to what the other two have as well. Again, it has an eight foot, eight inch hose, which is a nice hose, and then it comes into the wand itself. What I like about this wand is the hose, you know, the steam comes through the hose, obviously that can heat up quite a bit, and then it can carry through here and out. So while you're actually gripping here, this doesn't heat up on you, which is nice. That's different on the other two units. It definitely comes through here, that gets hotter, and on the McCulloch, that also gets hotter. 
Now the thing that I don't like about this one is it doesn't have a locking mechanism for the trigger. The other two do, so you can actually pull the trigger, lock it into the on position, and just get to steaming. This one, you have to hold and keep compressed the whole time. It has a lock out button so that you can't pull the trigger, but no way of locking it in so that it stays. At least, if it does, this one doesn't operate, but um, as far as I can tell, that one does not have that. Now again, the indicators on the front are nice and large, so that's easy to see. The hose connection point, now none of these are gonna have replaceable hoses. They're all in the machine and, and that's it. So um, this one just comes out of a hard plastic casing, so when you pull on it, you do run that risk of that kind of breaking down over time. And finally, for the central machinery, it does have a little handle up top so you can carry it around nice and easily. It kind of looks like they put a little cutout here so that you can store the wand, but it really, I mean, it, it doesn't, doesn't hold there. Um, so it's just, I don't know, it's just, just the handle. Next up though is the Wagner, and this one is my personal favorite design uh, as far as design goes. Nice large fill capacity in the back here. Uh, so you just screw that out, fill that up. You have just a large single button to turn on and off. And then the same two indicators here. So both of these will light up. And then once the steam capacity is ready, one of them will turn off and you're good to go. This one's handle is integrated into the machine here. You can see it's nice and flush, but it does flip up. So you have a nice carry handle. Again, little wheels in the back. Again, not great, but they get the job done perfectly fine. Uh, this is the main reason why this one's my favorite is this large storage capacity. Again, you can only store a couple of things here, but for me as a car detailer, these are the things that I need. I don't need a bunch of different, different accessories. So just having these ones stored in the machine is fantastic versus the other, these other ones you can, you know, you can lose them. There's not any storage on board for them. Now, when we talk about the hose, the hose connection, again, not replaceable, but much better here. You don't have that hard edge like you did on the uh, one from Harbor Freight. So this will just help to kind of keep the, the uh, hose bent at a more reasonable spec. So you should have less failure because of that. Uh, the wand is fine. I actually like it. It's comfortable. Um, and this one, like I said, it will heat up a little bit, but this one doesn't get that hot. It actually just kind of warms up a little bit versus the McCulloch. I noticed that this one heated up quite a bit more than this one. So I do like this one. The trigger on the other hand is weird. Uh, as you can see, my hand goes here. And it, so it's like really I'm operating it with just my two lower, the pinky and my ring finger. So not ideal there, but the fact that it has the locking mechanism on the bottom here where you can pull the trigger, lock it in place, and then you're good to go. Uh, kind of makes it so that that's not so bad. So I like that one a lot. And finally, we have the McCulloch. Uh, so this is the only one that has a different style wand here. Uh, the other ones, you know, have a little grip to them. This one's just the one and then a push button up top here. The good thing is, is it still has a locking mechanism, so that's great. Um, overall design, it's definitely not my favorite. Um, I, I don't like having this up here. This is nice because you can store the wand, right? But it's just so high up. So as far as storing it in like for me, you know, storing it in a cabinet or in my, my mobile setups, it, it's just not as, uh, kind of well put together in my personal opinion. Now for the water fill tank, it's right here. You just flip this open and then you have it there. Super simple. Um, you have a basic on off toggle switch in the back here, again, covered up. And then this is your steam indicator light here. So this will turn on when you flip it on and then this comes on with it as well. And then once the steam is ready, that turns off. Once again, little key wheels, just hard plastic. Again, not great, but similar to all the others. And then the other thing that I don't like about this machine um, is the fact that the hose comes out of the top. Again, just design-wise for me, to, for putting it away, it, I, I just don't like that. And plus, as you're using it, it's, it's kind of got a constant bend to it, right? So I feel like that's gonna fail over time sooner than it should, but at the same time, it does have the sleeve on there to keep it from just completely bending over. So um, I'm really happy they put that on there. But I would say, again, for my personal favorite design, it would have to be the Wagner. Now, to be honest with you guys, the one that I have the most experience with is the McCulloch and then also their higher, uh, larger capacity ones as well. So as far as production wise, um, I'm used to the McCulloch more than the others. And that's why I was kind of surprised when I got the Wagner uh, actually in, I saw it online, I ordered it just to do this test, um, but actually seeing the design features of it really impressed me. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the accessories. This is the box for the one from Harbor Freight. Again, I don't need a lot of accessories personally, so I'm really gonna be looking at more just the quality and the attachment. The attachment's the biggest part. You don't want the pressure from the steam blowing anything off, so the attachment point is very, very important. And so here we are, just to give you guys an example, this Brillo pad brush attachment, this kind of scrub sponge, I don't need that. It's too aggressive for me for car detailing. Again, around the house, very, very useful, just for me, not. Next up, you have a steel or a brass brush, way too aggressive for car detailing. Again, 
not needed, but for tile and grout or something, that might work really, really well. The problem that I have with this one is the attachment point. Now there's two different attachment points to this. There's a, a, another piece that you can put on here and then it actually twists on and goes over this little O-ring, which is fantastic. That's where you can attach your floor attachments and all that kind of stuff. However, for me personally, when I'm just using this little spray tip, it just slides over. You can see there's two O-rings here, but it literally just slides over. That's it. It doesn't go on perfectly straight. It's a little, little off angled here. Um, and it makes you think that you have to twist it on, but you don't. There's no twisting mechanism to it. It's just push on. And I haven't had any issues with this blowing off. Perfectly honest with you guys, have not had any issues, but it's not super, super secure, right? So to be perfectly fair, when I first started using this thing, it seemed a lot more secure. Now some steam has gotten in here. It's almost like there's a grease that they put on just so it slides on. Uh, and that kind of got over everything, I guess. And it makes it so it feels like it's just gonna pop right off. Again, I haven't had the issue, but it's something to note. Same thing here, moving on to the bra brass attachment. Well, to be fair, that one actually goes on quite a bit tighter. Feels, feels much tighter. But it does pop off still quite easily. Not nearly as bad. As you can see, I can actually kind of hold it from up there versus this one. You put it on there, try and hold it. And I can't even hold it at all. Like, let me just hold it here and it pops right off. So keep that in mind. So another thing to note with the one from Central Machinery, the Harbor Freight one, is if you look inside the tip here, you can't see any brass. I'm assuming there's brass in there because you, know, you don't want to melt the plastic from just pure uh, hot uh, steam but I can't see it. I'm sure it's back here, but I just, I don't know longevity wise how long that's gonna last. And uh, same thing for the extension here. However, I really like the fact that it is at least plastic covered uh, because I'm, I don't have to worry about a hot, hot brass tip hitting any surface and damaging it or potentially burning myself. Again, guys, if you want a full list of the accessories that it comes with, I will list all these products down in the description so you can actually go on their site and see the exact items you need. If you need a floor mopper or something like that, Check out the accessories and really see from there. Now next up is the Wagner. Again, I like this uh, little wand probably more than the others simply because it has the locking mechanism and it also, it, it, even though the steam comes through the main handle portion, it doesn't get that hot. Now similar to the other one, this one you can actually pop this off and put different extensions onto it. However, again, I don't need all of that. I'm more looking at the quality of the components and this one you can see the nozzle is on there and I can actually hold it, it's staying on there firm pull it off and it is the same kind of construction. It's basic just O-ring, but this one stays on considerably better and it actually lines up straight. So I like that one a lot more. Another thing to note is you can actually see a brass tip here. It's shrouded in plastic, so I don't have to worry about burning myself or hurting anything um, it, as far as uh, you know it touching a surface of anything. But I like knowing that, yeah, it's brass. It's gonna be protecting the plastic shroud, all that kind of good stuff. And then the plastic piece uh, slides right over that. Now again, this one comes with the least amount of accessories, at least in this form, the 905 form. You can get the 915 and the 925. But here are some of the accessories that it does come with. It comes with a nylon brush and it has a nice, it's like two thick rows of nylon versus some of the other ones will just be kind of a single row and it can, you'll see as you use these, these things will break down, they'll kind of fray out, they still work, but um, having the dual row is nice. And then they also have a gray one here. Um, so as you can see here guys, on the small one it's just one row, the larger one is two rows, but um, the gray brush is quite soft. So actually usable in a car situation, you don't have to worry about damaging as much, you'd still want to be careful, right? But this one could definitely be used. Now the construction of these, just like all the other ones, they're plastic, but they're a nice hard plastic and will work over time. The thing that you do want to be careful of though is again them coming off and this one does seem to be a better fit where things don't want to just pop off as much as the Harbor Freight one. And now last but not least is the McCulloch. Um, again, no onboard storage with this one. You can store the wand though. So really this, the Harbor Freight one had no storage. The Wagner for me has the accessory storage which is very, very important. And then this one just has the extor uh, storage for the wand. Now I already covered this briefly, but with this one, you do, it's just more of a handle versus the actual kind of a wand attachment. But this one, instead of a trigger, you have just this little push button to start and stop the steam. But you do also have a locking mechanism on this one, like with the Wagner, so I like that a lot. However, this part did seem to heat up 
more for me than the Wagner did. I don't know if it's more insulated on the Wagner or what, but this, it gets warm. Just keep that in mind. It's not unbearable or anything, but it does get warm. Now, as far as accessories go, this one doesn't come with a little angled pointer like those other ones did. Um, so if you're just gonna use it for just pure steam and not have to worry about a brush or anything, you use it like this. And the thing that I don't like about this one is you can see the brass tip protrudes out um, from the plastic. Now, that may be best for long term. Again, you don't wanna heat up this plastic shroud around it, but uh, you do have the potential of heating up that brass and it holding heat and then actually touching something and, and damaging it. So, or running it across your hand and potentially hurting your hand. Now, this main attachment is fantastic though because it actually screws on. So you can see the threaded piece there, it screws on and then there's still an O-ring, so fantastic. You do not have to worry about this one blowing off. It's on there and that's fantastic. The accessories though that it comes with, again, this is a nylon bristled brush. Very, very stiff though. Again, not something I would personally use for car detailing, but these just slide over the top, just like so. Now, they, I will say though, they are very, very, very snug. So not a problem there. And then also, as you're using it, as you can see here, you can see the brass tip. Hopefully I can get that to focus for you. So the steam's gonna be coming through that and this is just an attachment to, to agitate. You don't have to worry about that blowing off because the steam's not get pushing against this. Okay, so now let's get into the actual testing of these units to see if they actually produce the heat, the runtime, all that kind of good stuff. Now all of these units are gonna advertise about an eight to nine minute heat up time. So when you're first initially filled up with water and turned on, eight to nine minutes to full capacity so you're getting steam. So I started off with the central machinery, the one from Harbor Freight, and yeah, it was about eight minutes and 30, about eight and a half minutes approximately to heat up the 30 ounces of water that I put into this. Again, 41 ounce capacity, but I put in 30 minutes across the board here just to keep it even and see how it goes from there. Now the problem with this machine is once it was heated up to capacity, I pulled the trigger and it spit out a lot of water. So now I understand that this thing just got primed and it's just ready to go. So maybe it's just getting that out, but even kind of throughout the thing, it did spit out some water throughout. So not the driest steam here, um, but definitely getting a ton of steam. Another downfall with that is when you release the trigger, it did constantly kind of drip water. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's especially if you're working in a car, it's kind of a pain. You have to kind of manage that and keep it out of the car. So it's not just dripping water constantly. Uh, it's not terrible, but it is definitely something to know. Now, when I initially pulled the trigger from start, it ran for about 30 seconds before the steam indicator came out again, saying that it needs to rebuild steam. So I let the trigger go and it took about 45 seconds to a minute to heat back up and for that light to turn off. Once it turned off, I pulled the trigger, started to steam again, and it ran a little bit longer, around about 45 seconds, but then it did the same thing and I had to let it build up again. Now, is that a problem? No, because I tested that as well. And even though the lighting, the indicator was on, I was like, you know, I can't just, that, that doesn't make sense to me that I can't be stopping every 30 seconds. So I just let it go and it ran and ran and ran with that light on, no effect to the steam. It still produced the same amount of steam, same quality. And it ran for 24 minutes, again, with 30 ounces of water. So up to, and if you add another 10 ounces of water, is it gonna get to that 45? No, I don't think so, but still a significant amount of runtime. Like, I don't have any issue with that. That's plenty of runtime in my personal opinion. And again, you have to consider, I'm, it's completely constant. It's pulled the trigger and just let it go. If you're working around the house or whatever, you're gonna be pulling the trigger, working with it, stopping for a little bit, going again, stopping, you know, so. So you probably get 45 minutes or so of actual usable time, like, you know, in real life situations, but just pulling the trigger and letting it air out until it's empty was 24 minutes with 30 ounces. Now, I really didn't notice any sort of drop off in the steam production until the very, very end. Once it actually started to die out, um, it was just because it was out of water and that's what it was. Now, I did test the temperature of the steam coming out. Guys, I had a better option to do it. I bought this nice gauge. It turns out it needs one of those little weird square D battery. I think it's a D battery. Um, and I didn't have one. I was like, ah, oh, man. So I used a basic thermometer, like a meat thermometer type of thing and just held it in place. So not completely accurate here, guys. I want to be fair with that. But this one produced what I was able to uh, uh, gauge right at the nozzle as close as I could. I got 195 degrees or right about that. And then about six inches away from the nozzle, it was about 125 degrees. So I think they state like a lot of bacteria will be, will be killed at around 145, but it does have to be prolonged exposure as well. So uh, keep that in mind. It does get to that and it can kill bacteria, at least some, um, but you have to keep it close. 
So next one up is the Wagner unit, and this one got very, very similar results. Very similar. Uh, from, from empty, you know, fill it up and turn it on, to, to being ready to steam was right around the eight minute mark. And this one did produce a, a, a similar amount of steam, but it lasted a little bit longer. So same thing, it was ready, I pulled the trigger, it lasted 50 seconds to a minute, somewhere in there, before the light, a lighting indicator came on saying that need to be, you know, build up pressure again. So I stopped, let that uh, rebuild. It took 60 to 90 seconds to, for that to rebuild. I checked it a couple times, but it did run for a longer amount of time, about a minute before the lighting indicator would come on. Again, I can't test that way, constantly pulling and, and, and depressing the trigger. So I just let it run. And same thing with that one. Even though the lighting indicator was on, I had no difference in performance. It produced tons of steam and was good to go. Now this one also ran for a full 24 minutes. So same amount of time between these two machines. The biggest difference though, is when I pulled the trigger on this one, right off the bat, it was relatively dry steam. It wasn't spraying out a bunch of water. It was dry steam from the start. So as far as uh, steam production, um, this one is the winner for sure. Now, when you talk about like really high-end uh, steam machines, you can actually adjust the amount of water content you want in the steam. These are not that, these are just relatively dry steam units. Um, and this one, the Wagner, definitely outperformed the one from Harbor Freight. And then very similarly, when I checked the temperature gauge, uh, this one right at the nozzle, 196 degrees is what I was able to get. So this one was 195, so marginal error there, I don't know, basically the same. And then about six inches away, this one went to 120. Again, this one was at 125, but you know, it, it could definitely just be uh, uh, an error using that little, that little gauge. Now finally, we move on to the McCulloch, and this one uh, also very, very similar. It states an eight minute warm up time, and it was exactly, I think it came to like 8.02 or something like that. So very, very accurate on the warm up time. Now this one got nice dry steam right off the bat, and this is one thing that I was concerned about with the other McCulloch machines, the larger capacity ones, a lot of times they would build up pressure, I would pull the trigger and it would go and then it would have to rebuild pressure again before it would actually hold the pressure. This one did not do that. For this smaller unit, this one was perfect. The, st the steam that it produced was a nice dry steam, very, very similar to the Wagner, so definitely these two better steam production in my personal opinion. However, this one you can see, I'll show you in the video here, but it seemed to shake a little bit. And what I think that was, was, you know, it's a dry steam and then it would trigger a little bit of moisture and, and it would shake the unit. Um, not a big deal, just something to keep in mind. I couldn't feel a difference or anything like that between the two uh, amounts of steam. But just something to know, it just didn't seem like to be giving out the purest steam compared to this one. And also with this one, it seemed to give out slightly less steam in my personal opinion than these two. It just, the, the steam cloud wasn't as big. I tested these all at the same time, same humidity in the air. It was about 72 degrees yesterday in the shop. And uh, yeah, it definitely didn't have as big of a steam cloud compared to these two. Now, just like the other ones, this had the same issue. Once I, you know, from, from initial ramp up, it says it's ready, I pulled the trigger, same thing, ran for about 30 to 45 seconds, similar to the one from Harbor Freight before it said they need to be recharged or rebuild up the pressure. Same thing, about 60 seconds for it to recharge and then uh, pull the trigger again, 30 to 45 seconds. So at that rate, again, I just let it go and no change in, in, the, in the steam production, but that may be the reason it was causing that little flicker, uh, maybe because it was still trying to build pressure and it would let out a little bit of more water than it should in certain, at certain times. I don't know that for sure, but I do know that the other two did not do that. However, with this machine at the 30 ounces of water, this one did run longer than the other two. It ran for 26 minutes versus the 24 minutes from these other machines. Um, again, is that because of the smaller amount of steam coming out, or at least in my perception, it seemed like a smaller cloud of steam. Maybe it's not using, you know, pushing out as much, but it did run for 26 minutes. Now, as far as the temperature rating goes on this one, again, marginal errors here, so keep that in mind, but right at the tip, as close as I could, it was getting 190 degrees, and then about six inches away, 110 degrees. Now, for all of those numbers, they did not change throughout the whole life of the steam cycle. Uh, it, you know, from right off the bat, it was producing that, and then at minute 23, it was still producing that same temperature. So keep that in mind, guys, 190 to 110, uh, 196 to 120, and 195 to 125. So all within the same realm, uh, but just slightly different. So which unit do I think you should get? If you're similar to me and the, the, what you need is something for car detailing, um, I would definitely go with the Wagner strictly because it got it got really clean uh, steam. Um, it is the shortest hose, but still eight feet's plenty. 
and the onboard storage is fantastic, as well as the smallest. You can see it's the lowest profile of all these, and then you have the handle that flips up. I really like this little unit. I wasn't expecting to. This is the first time I ever used it. Longevity, who knows, but Wagner is a reputable brand, so I don't see any issue there. Um, I'm very, very happy with this machine. I also like the just simple on-off switch. Um, between these two, um, you know, they're, they're both similar, but just overall build quality, I would, I would, just because the nozzles themselves, I would go with the McCulloch over the, over the one from Harbor Freight, just because this tip just pops right off too easily. I don't have confidence in that over time. Again, this one, if I'm just using the spray tip only and not any, any attachments, you do have to be careful with that little bit of brass holding out there, but, um, that the fact that that thing screws on, you're not gonna have to worry about it at all. So I would definitely go here. My personal favorite, the Wagner, and even if I was, you know, if I'm looking for something around the house or whatever else, I would just go with the Wagner with more accessories. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope that helps you. I know there's always options for all these steamers, and you're like, man, which one should I get? Uh, the McCulloch, I believe, has the most reviews on Amazon, highly rated. But in my personal opinion, after testing them, um, it's a great machine for sure. I definitely like it, but I would actually, I would, I would go with the Wagner. So that's it guys. I hope that video helps you. Please make sure to like the video, make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.